Namaste everyone, welcome back to Yoga with Rina. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're staying happy and you're staying healthy. Today's session is going to be working our joints, which can get a little bit tight when we're mobile, so it's about loosening everything up and really, really helping uh, the joints all over the body to keep ourselves happy, healthy and strong. So let's make a start right away. If we come into a sitting position, um, you can sit nice and comfortably, one leg over in Sukhasan, and we're gonna sit up nice and straight, chest up and chin up. Um, before we begin, uh, please do remember to do what you can. I hope we're listening to our body. Um, we're not stretching ourselves to any pain at no point should any of this become uncomfortable. Just a nice loose stretch that you should be experiencing as we're doing all of the practices. So. Uh, try your hardest, do this with a smile, and most importantly, do this with a nice, clear breath as well. So, Jin Mudra, placing on our knees with our palms sitting up, facing up, and we're sitting up nice and straight. So if we can just close our eyes and our mouths, and just take a few moments to come into your body, using your breath, so we're using our noses to inhale, and exhale. have a few moments of quiet to settle the thoughts, the breath, the entire body. Let's remember to open the abdomen up. Let's remember to align the back of the neck and the base of the spine. Go for one more inhale and exhale. Keep those exhales nice and long. Go for three omkars, A, O and Ma. Together, inhale. Uh. Once you've finished your last omkar, just keep the eyes closed, keep the mouth closed. You can gulp the saliva to help your throat relax a little bit more. And if you're unsure, you can open your eyes. And if you know how to practice the Kapalabhati, which is the passive inhale and forceful exhale, you can start in your own time. For those of you doing this with me, in this practice, uh, we are forcing the breath out from our nose, we're just clearing the airways. If you are practicing with somebody next to you, um, please do try and open a window. Uh, it's always nice to everything that we're flushing out of our body. We want to make sure it's going out and far away as well, okay? So you'll be making, when you're breathing, you'll be making this sound. And actively your stomach will pull itself in. You should try and imagine it touching the base of your spine. Okay, so we'll go for 30 pushes. Um, if you would like to go for more, uh, just hit pause and uh, you can pump up to 30 more. You can do a minute, you can do two minutes, so we'll do one per second. And anyone with any high blood pressure or any hypertension or migraines, this is definitely something I would recommend you uh, leave for the moment um, and just being careful. Maybe you can just do some nice deep breaths, filling in the oxygen in our lungs as we go. So for those of us participating, let's start the practice. Keep 
keep pumping, we're about halfway. As you're pumping, make sure the jaw is nice and relaxed. And the eyebrows as well, and the nose, nothing on the face should be moving. And just imagining your stomach touching the bottom of your spine. So keep pumping, we are in our last five or so. when you finish you can just sit and enjoy the stillness the emptiness in the lungs nice light back have a nice light smile on our face keep the jaws relaxed as well we've cleaned everything out the more you do this the more beneficial it is for us especially those lungs and then whenever you're ready with your next inhale, you can open your eyes calmly with a few blinks and we can stretch our arms all the way up. So stretch up as high as you can and pull yourself out to the side. Okay, really, really stretching the back muscles and opening everything up, especially if we've been sitting and quite unactive for some time. Okay, so we'll be going straight into our Surya Namaskar today, but before we do that, just a quick head to toe, but we can do this while we're sitting anyway. So just keep your leg in Sukhasana, or if you're comfortable, you can uncross it, that's also fine. Okay, so just keep your chins up and we're gonna lift our head, breathe in. And we're gonna slowly, without agitating the neck, drop our chin to the chest. And then we're going to inhale to the right, and then left, exhale, and then ear to shoulder, just stretch that out. It's also a very, very important joint over here, yeah? The neck is very, very important, so keeping everything nice and loose. You can shift your shoulders up and do a semicircle backwards, and then drop the shoulders and then do a semicircle forwards, keeping your chin as close to your chest as you can. Let's get moving onto the shoulders and let's get the elbows going okay so just touch them together take a nice deep breath in open those elbows out and we're going to do the shoulders at the same time yeah so touching those elbows as we go keeping your backs nice and straight and making sure that we haven't curved the base of our spine yeah we really want to make sure that the base of our spine is not curved at all yeah so keep yourself going good and then forwards so just going forward, motion, and last one, and relax, and we're going to move to our wrists now. Our wrists are very important, we're going to be using them in one of our asanas later. So what I want us to do is bring the mind in front nice and straight, and without moving the rest of your arm, I just want you to rotate your wrists, okay? And do it so much so that you can feel the stretch right on the front. So keep the rotations going. And then change direction you can get your fingers moving as well get them involved all the way around and there's a difference in doing this and the difference in doing this so keep your body nice and still okay and then just flick out and we're going to do our spine we're going to do our hips at the same time so keep your legs crossed and we're just going to turn and twist okay just turn and twist and loosen up the spine without even standing yeah, and you can feel sometimes when you're doing a practice like this and really just turning, you can feel how tight the lower back muscles can be. So really just go for that turn and twist. Yeah, go one, two, three, four, keep going and keep smiling. Good. And use your elbows to bring more momentum into your body. Excellent. And we can stop there and then we can just bring our feet together in front of us like this. Yep, and then just rub the knees. Okay, and then legs in front and just roll the ankles. Yep. So our focus today, as you know, is joints. So we wanna make sure we're looking after all of our joints. So some of these practices are very good for arthritis and rheumatism. And some of these practices are, um, um, they, they can make that they can um, be really painful if you if you have them so please make sure you are listening to um, the poses and, and, and knowing your body's limitations so we're going to go straight into Surya Namaskar it's important to stretch and warm our body first so no hands if you can and we're going to stand up and we're going to go straight into Surya Namaskar okay so keeping our feet together okay and 
making sure, keeping our feet together and making sure that we uh, place our hands down in the same spot and they stay there. We don't want to be moving any, any um, of the hands. And for those of us that are regular practitioners, we can bring our feet in the same position as well. Okay, so shoulders back, take a nice big stretch all the way up and exhale down. Remember to spend more time on those exhales, yeah? Exhales are very, very important. So here we go, inhale and exhale. And inhale, left leg. Exhale, join. Knees and chest. Hips to hands, inhale up. Exhale, lean back. Try and get your spine curved as much in reverse as you can. Really open up the shoulder blades, you feel very nice. Inhale, left leg. Exhale, join. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, right leg. Exhale, join. Knees and chest. Inhale, up. Exhale, back. Inhale, right leg. Exhale, join. Inhale, up. And exhale, down. And slowly release the hands and release the legs. Good. Well done. So, well done on the Surya Namaskars. We're going to go straight into our poses and making sure that when you are doing these, you're not putting too much pressure on how you're standing and not too much pressure on one joint, okay? We wanna collectively share the load of our body, the weight of our body with the joints collectively. So not just focusing on one point, okay? So the first asana that we're gonna do is Garudasana and that's eagle pose. So what I want us to do is to bring our feet together and roll our shoulders back and keep, try and keep your eyes on one mark, yeah? So just while I'm explaining, you can keep your eyes on one mark. This is a very good practice to help you balance, yeah? So Gaurasana is very good for your joints, yeah? Especially multiple joints, but especially the lower part of the body. There are two ways to do this with your legs. You can either bring them in front and cross over and bend, but today we're gonna to be doing it from the back, okay? So if I just show you, if you have a quick look, I'll just show you what we're doing with our foot. We're just tuck it in around our calf. And if you feel like you're not able to balance, okay, you can use the wall if you need to, or also, rather than bringing them in, just bring the foot on the floor. If you bring it on the floor, you're still putting the same amount of uh, weight and, and pressure on, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a nice little inhale, and whenever we're ready, we're going to lift our left heel, and then our left toe, and then we're just gonna settle. So you can either put it behind your calf or ankle or on the floor. But whatever you're doing, guys, it must be important. It's very important to make sure that you are balancing. So this is not about getting the leg up really high and wobbling. It's about initial stages of making sure we're nice and still. And then we're going to raise our arms to the side and bring them in front. And we're going to cross our right hand over our left. And we're going to try and cross the hands over. Yeah, so my right elbow is inside my left. And if you're not able to cross over like this, then just touch the back of the palms together, that's also fine. Yeah, that's also fine. So if I just show you from side view, that's also fine, yeah? And if you're able to, you can return, uh, sorry, you can complete the turn and do the namaskar, yeah? Because what we're then gonna do is we're actually gonna try and bend a little bit, yeah? So we're gonna try and bend. So as you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you're, you're not sticking your bottom out as you're doing this, you're literally coming down as if you're coming down in a lift even if it's just a little bit. And this bend is completely optional, guys. If you feel like you wanna stay here, then that's fine. Okay, so hold your pose wherever you are and feel your elbows on your chest because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna really open up the back muscles up at the top where our shoulders are. So now we're just going to raise the arms up, yeah? So we're just gonna raise the arms up without moving anything. So take a nice deep breath in, hold it three, two, Exhale, hold the pose one, breathe in and release that leg and release the arms. You can stretch your arms up, breathe in and you can breathe out and bring them down. So keep your eyes on the same mark, yeah? Keep your eyes on the same mark. I'll tell you 
this way so you're able to see. Very important to keep your balance and we want to make sure that we're not wobbling anywhere and one leg is always better. So if you're like me and balance is a little bit less on your left leg, that's the one we want to try and focus on a little bit more. So let's try the left leg now. We did all right, let's do the left. So take a nice inhale. Whenever you're ready, try and lift that heel. And when that heel is ready and balanced, you can take your toes off the floor. And when you're ready, you can either hook behind the calf or the ankle or place it down on the floor. So whatever is comfortable for you, you can raise those arms out to the side, okay? And bring them in front. And we've already done the right. So this time we're gonna take our left elbow and we're going to put our left elbow inside our right. Yeah, so the left elbow inside our right. And you can touch the back of the palms together or you can cross them completely. And then whenever you're ready, keeping your hips in, take an exhale and drop the knee slightly. So you've got to drop your body, bend slightly and come as low down as you can. And really feeling it in the calf as you're doing this. Yeah, really feeling it in the calf as you're doing this. So ready to lift our elbows off our chest, inhale and lift, five, hold it there, four, three, you can do it, two, feel that heat on the ankle, and one, and exhale, release that leg, breathing in, and stretch those arms up, and breathe out, and bring those hands all the way down. And I'm sure those ankles are feeling very, very hot right now, yeah? Very hot. So if we come to a sitting position now, you can come and sit on your knees or however is comfortable. We're going to do uh, Dandasana, yeah? Jataranga Dandasana, but a slightly different version. So this is our fourth pose in Surya Namaskar, in our salutation sequence, uh, where we are essentially in a plank, four point, yeah? Uh, two hands and toes and, and two legs. But what we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna turn our wrists around. So rather than our wrist facing in this direction, in a forward direction, they're going to be facing backwards. I want us to be really careful with this because it doesn't mean we have to turn them completely back. Yeah, doesn't mean that at all. Even if, say if they're at a 12 o'clock at the moment, even if you can only turn it, say for example, two o'clock or three o'clock or something, that's also fine. The goal is not to push ourselves, the goal is to feel a nice stretch. And we're going to be shifting forward and back without lifting our hips up. So you'll really be able to understand where am I sharing the weight? I need to share it with my calves, I need to share it with my ankles, I need to share it with my toes. Okay, so very important, be very careful when you're doing this. Anyone with severe arthritis and really severe joint pain, I would recommend not to do this, okay? So if we just bring ourselves onto all fours and you can bring your hands op uh, open in front of you and whenever you're ready, you can start to just turn them outwards, yeah? Just turn them outwards and do what your body can, yeah? Turn them outwards, they can either face completely back to you like this okay or you can face them slightly outwards whatever is comfortable but keep them locked because in a moment we're going to be going into a plank position so listen to your body guys you know them better than me and being nice and careful okay so here we go what we're going to do is we're going to shift our knees back okay and we are going to take one leg off and if this is comfortable for you and you're feeling a nice stretch that's fine you can keep one leg on there and if you're able to you can bring your hips up Okay, now hold the pose and just look a few meters in front of you and you can even shift your weight back. Now, if you have a quick look at how I'm moving, you can see that my hips are not going up and down. Okay, I'm actually moving forward where I roll on my toes. My hips are still up working my core and when I stretch back, I can feel it in my calves and more so in my wrists. So hold it three, hold it two, hold it one and you can exhale and you can relax, okay? So you can come and sit in Vajrasana if that's comfortable for you and just give your wrists a little TLC, a little bit of rotation because you can really feel the weight that is on there, okay? And then if you're ready and when you are, just give them a nice little rotation, yeah? So really important, we always forget the wrist joints, yeah? Everyone's thinking about their knees and things like that. So very important, those joints and your wrist, yeah? Hands are very important. We use everything, yeah? We need them for everything. We use them for everything. So wrist joints are very, very important. 
ready to move on to our next joint now. So we're going to give the hands a little rest and we're going to move into Malasana. So we have done this before, but when we do it normally, it's a groin stretch, yeah, the per perineum muscles. Today, Malasana is going to be slightly different. This is the garland pose, so it's essentially a squat. So if you do have knee problems or anything like that, you need to be very careful, okay? You can use a pillow or you can use some blocks as per your comfort. But the idea is to make sure we're feeling the stretch in our ankles. So if I can ask you to come onto your toes and lift your knees off the floor, okay? Um, and just get yourself ready in a squatting position so that you are comfortable enough to keep your heels flat. Now, if you can't keep your heels flat, that's absolutely fine. They don't need to be, yeah? But what matters is that you are keeping your back straight and you're able to lean slightly back, okay? So if I show you from side view, what we want to make sure we're doing is not completely leaning forward because the more you are able to lean back, the more you'll feel it in your ankles. But what we essentially want to do today is rather than keeping our knees apart, we want to keep them together. So if possible, try and bring your knees as close as you possibly can. It doesn't matter if they're not quite touching, even a little gap in between. And even in this position, if you start to try and straighten up a little bit, you can already feel that stretch come all the way up your calves. Yes, if I show you from side view, I'm currently just a few inches apart. My knees are just an inch or two apart. I've got my hands on the floor. And if I want, if you want to, you can keep them up. And what we're doing is we're essentially leaning back and straightening up a little bit more. And as you do so, you'll really feel it on the front. Okay, so just hold the pose there. And if you really want to push yourself a little bit more, bring your feet completely together. And the more you bring them together, the more pressure you get on those ankles when you start to lean back. So this is me leaning forward and putting the weight a little bit on my toes on the front part. And then as I lean back, I stretch out my shins a little bit more and I've got to keep those knees together. And we can really challenge ourselves by lifting our arms up, okay? So just wherever you are, hold the pose three, hold it there two, lean back a little bit more, one, and relax. So you can completely release the legs and bring them out in front of us. And now I'm sure the ankles are gonna appreciate a little wave. So from here, just give them a nice relaxation. Uh, wave here, I'm sure they feel very nice after all that weight and all that pressure that was on there. So, well done. So we've done the Gharudasana, which is the eagle. We've done Malasana, which is the garland. And now we're going to do Ghomukhasana. Ghomukhasana is very good for your knee joints. So you can see we're moving in uh, stages, okay? We're moving from joint to joint, where one is a little bit more predominantly um, weighted on in these poses. So in Ghomukhasana, what we're going to do is we are going to if you're able to. So if you're not able to, try and sit in Vajrasana on your knees in this posture, okay? But this is very good for helping us uh, open up all of our spine, yeah? All in up back muscles as well. So if I show you from the front, what we're gonna do is, if you're able to, you want to try and turn your feet outwards and sit on your bottom. And for some of us, you can already feel okay, that the stretch on your knees, you can already feel that stretch on your knees. So we really wanna try and bring, and it might help if you open your feet out, or, uh, open your knees out a little bit. So you can see that my feet are actually sticking uh, out and they're turning outwards, yeah? Um, so as comfortable as you can, remember if you can't bring your ankles and your toes out, please do just sit in Vajrasana. It's completely and utterly fine. We don't wanna push our body. So wherever you are, Okay, however you're sitting, we want to make sure we are comfortable, our tummies are up, our backs are straight, and we are going to now try, okay, with our right hand. So we're going to raise our right hand all the way up, and we're going to bring our left hand behind our back, okay? And if you can, if you're able to hold them, yeah, if you're able to sort of link them together like this with your hands, if you're able to link them together like this, and touch your hands, that's great. And if not, just put one hand on the back of your head and the other one at the base of your spine, okay? And keep your chin up and really just hold that pose nice and calmly. And there should be no pain, only a nice stretch. And if you're really trying to hook your hands in together, try not to close yourself in. So whatever you're doing, hold the pose up, 
Hold it there. Five, four, three. Happy faces, guys. Lift those chins up, open those chests, lean back a little bit. One, and relax. Now from here, we're gonna go straight into the other side. So release the hands, take a nice inhale. And as you exhale, try the other side. So first, let's try our hand on the head and on the base of the spine. Get our bodies ready, trunks ready, open everything up. And if you're ready, try and go for that hook. And if you can't, you might find that one side was actually easier, but that's fine. We don't want to push our body too much. We're just really, really leaning our chins up and we are stretching and opening up our spine. So hold it there, four and three and chins up and two and one. Nice big smiles. <laughs> Come on guys, we can do it. And then whenever you're ready, you can relax. Take a nice deep breath in and out and relax. You can push yourself up and you can return those legs as per comfortable. So there are a few ways to do this, okay? You can do it with your legs facing out, but you can also do it with your knees crossed over like this, yeah? So really good for stretching the quads as well. But we wanted to work our joints today, hence we kept our legs outwards, yeah? So we're ready to come into our last pose now and always like to finish with some sort of opener. This is Purvottanasana. This is a reverse plank, but actually we're going to be doing this with our chest facing up to the ceiling. So being very, very careful like this, okay? You can do this in two ways. Uh, you can do it on your elbows like this, but today we want to be, because we've strengthened our wrists up, we're actually going to be using our wrists to do so, okay? So from here, we want to make sure you can do this. You can start in a few different ways, just being very careful. You can bend your knees if that helps. And if you really want to push yourself, you can keep your feet nice and straight. But what we're going to be doing is we're essentially going to be lifting our hips up, okay? So if you want to have a quick look and then um, do so in your own time, you're welcome to. So just making sure the hands are nice and steady, keep those chins up, take a nice inhale, and then lift those hips and lift your head all the way back, okay? And it doesn't matter if your elbows are not massively locked. They need to be semi-locked. If you bend them, you might lose a little bit of control. And you might wanna bring your hips down and adjust and try again, but that's completely fine, okay? So whatever's comfortable for your body. Take a nice inhale, come on. Whatever you're doing, hold the pose, enjoy. See if you can really stretch a little bit more of the ankle by pointing your toes and trying to get the toes to touch the floor on the other side as well. Okay, and the most important thing is keep those hips and those tummies all the way up. So just hold it there. Three, I'm sure you've been holding it for a while. Two, big smiles and exhales. And one, a little bit higher. And release. Okay, and then just give the ankles a little wave and then just give the wrists a little wave as well. And just bring those legs in. You can return into Sukhasan. We'll finish with some nice calming breathing practices. This time we won't hold any mudra. I just want you to just flop your wrists a little bit, just loosen them up. I'm sure that feels very good after all of these practices. So palms facing up, keep them nice and relaxed, eyes closed and mouths closed. Have a nice light smile on your face. Try and feel the heat inside your wrists. Try and feel the heat, the knees, the ankles. Very important when we practice, try and take some time to experience and enjoy the changes after each pose or at the end of your practice. So nice long inhale. Exhale. I'm just going for a nice long inhale and exhale. But this time, what we'll do is we'll finish with one cycle of Nari Shuddhi. So alternate nostril breathing. We're going to take our thumb and our fourth finger. Those of you who know how to do this, by all means, carry on. Those of you doing this with me, always remember you start uh, you always finish on a uh, nostril that you started with. Okay, so we're going to nice and calmly take an inhale from both. 
and just place your right thumb on your right nostril and exhale from your left. Now take your time, the breath should be so quiet that even if there was a feather there, you shouldn't be distracted. Once you've finished your exhale from your left, inhale from the same nostril, inhale left. And just close both with a little pinch, so your ring finger and your thumb, and now lift your thumb and exhale from your right. Try and keep your back nice and straight, run all the elbows out. And feel that hot air coming out. Now feel the cool air as you inhale from your right. So cool air comes in. Close both with a little pinch, lift and exhale from your left, feeling the hot air. So keep that exhale going, keep that exhale going, we're clearing our uh, pathways, clearing all the nadis here, our energy channels. And whenever you're ready, you can relax your hands and drop your saliva and just observe that with just one cycle, how slow and calm everything has become. These breathing practices are very good for anxiety, especially stress, for example, for exams and things like that. Very good practice for that. We'll finish with our mantra of peace and happiness. So if we just bring our palms in front of our chest, Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha, sarve santu niramayaha, sarve bhadrani pashyantu, ma kaschit dukha bhag bhavet. Aum shanti shanti shanti. Let's all be happy, let's all be healthy, let's all see the good in others. May we all be without any pain or illness, and most importantly, may we all have peace, peace and peace. Let's release the hands behind our back, exhale and bring up and inhale and we're sitting up and start to rub those palms. Get those hands nice and warm, keep your back straight, chins up, and lightly cupping the eyes. I, eyes are probably really hard working, so I want to make sure that we're not straining them or squinting. So whenever you're ready, loosen the grip and let a few dots of light come through. You can palm the forehead and crown of the head and take a nice deep breath in. Extend your spine and pull yourself out ready to start or finish or continue your days and extend a nice big namaskar all the way to the top and let's finish with happy brains and happy words and happy hearts thank you very much so thank you for tuning in i hope you're all keeping well stay happy stay healthy and i'll see you next time namaste